My name's Kaz and this is my heavily modified Land Rover Defender. I've always liked the boxy shape. I guess it's probably because I grew up with the Suzuki. My first four wheel drive was a Jeep that I bought myself, which again was heavily modified and kind of got defected a lot. I didn't used to do much camping and fishing. It was more just rock crawling. And a few years ago, I got really into fishing and that's when I decided to build this. So pretty much it's a land-based fishing vehicle. I got pretty lucky when I got it. It had a lot of good mods already done to it. I wouldn't usually go for something that's already been modified, but the, the things done to it were done pretty well and the, there was a lot of big ticket items underneath. The drivetrain, suspension, um, long range fuel tank, it's engineered with the 35s. Um, they, were, they were good stuff. Over the years, like people had probably added to the 12 volt setup and it had a few things that were messy and it didn't really work that well. The batteries were flat. So part of the build that was really important was setting up a proper electrical system because I want to be off grid a lot of the time. I wanted to bring it back to as much of a classic look as I could. The idea was to have it cool and classic but still have all the touring stuff. It's been repainted. It's a satin finish in a Nardo grey, which is an Audi colour. Once you paint a car, it kind of highlights anything that's not new. So I painted it and then realised all the window seals and plastics and everything just looked really old. So we ended up doing pretty much a full restoration on the whole outside. I took it to a venture merchant in Marrickville. I'd taken my Jeep to his shop before uh, when I was sort of thinking about setting up the Jeep. We kind of figured out that there wasn't enough space. So after looking at all the defenders there, like I actually decided to go get one. Well, for me, it was always big to have the, the bed on the inside. I didn't want the rooftop tent and I'd done enough swagging. I wanted to be able to just fold it back, hop in. Pretty much everything um, kind of revolves around the, the false floor. So we've made the kitchen and the um, fridges and everything kind of fit underneath. I'll give you a look. Makes it easy, like pretty much all I've got to do is slide the thing out, the whole thing's ready to go. As soon as I hook the gas up, everything's just ready to cook. There's a 60 litre water tank underneath and there's actually another 45 litre tank in the rear quarter. That one's gravity fed and that one's got a pump on it. There's a 100 amp hour lithium battery under the front seat. There's a 120 amp hour solar panel on the roof as well. And under the front number plate, there's an Anderson plug for a solar blanket. Yeah, so these were one of the mods that was already on there because they're, they're quite useful, especially with the bed set up. I actually climb in and out through here. <laughs> and so around the back, I've got a double fridge slide drawer with um, two front runner cub boxes at the end. Uh, on top of that's my um, drone, which we use for fishing, dropping baits out. So this going, um, pretty much I got all my fishing stuff. We made these drawers like purposely for the tackle boxes. Snake bike kit, um, first aid kit. On this side, we've got the um, compressor hoses, uh, an ax, saw. Yeah, so when I got it, already had one Recaro in it. The driver's side um, was a bit ratty and like the bolsters were starting to, um, the foam was breaking in them. Luckily, I found, I found a second one of the same model. They're actually really hard to find. A guy from my work's a trimmer, uh, one of my mates, so he pretty much did both seats, center console, dash, redid the whole headliner, um, the, whole, the whole carpet's custom trim as well. So the steering wheel is a brand called Exmoor Trim. Um, they mainly do stuff just for Land Rovers. Oh, I like it, it's fancy. Um, it, it's a bit big though, like for, for serious off-roading, it's a bit big, but it, it, it looks apart. So if I do do a real big trip like the Cape or something, there's a chance I might take that off. So one of the, um, the good mods it came with was the Maxi Drive front and rear vacuum operated diff locks. Underneath the center console, it's got all the ECU and electrics and stuff, fuses and that have been moved here um, to keep them away from water. And with the, the land based fishing rods, like they're all pretty long. Pretty much my fishing gaff is two meters long. That's the only fishing box I could find that um, is big enough for the gaff. So there's like, it's got like purpose-built um, mounts and little straps so you can fit like probably eight or nine rods straight across and then pull the strap over. So it's kind of continuously evolving. So as soon as I get towards the end, like I add more stuff to it. it. Drives good. Like, I mean, I had 37s on the Jeeps. This actually drives better than them. It's been more capable off-road than I thought it would be. It's got quite a bit of power for one of these engines. It's got probably around 200 horsepower, maybe a little bit over, because it's got the Upgraded turbo, remapped ECU, intercooler. So all that stuff was already done. So it's a little bit different to a lot of tours. Like you look at it, you can't tell straight away. There's not a whole lot of accessories on the outside. 
hopefully it inspires people to do a few more like um, builds like this, like retro, cool, classic look with touring mods as well. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to recognize this car. If you see us out on the beach having a fish, just say good day.